Amen. I welcome every one of you tonight in Jesus' name. Every time we come together, Bagada, Ketu, tell me. Shomulu, always happy people. Blessed people. And you're happy in the work of the Lord. I pray that the work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for raising up your people. And thank you because they are always there. Always present. Always devoted, committed to your work. And I pray, Lord, you bless their faithfulness. Every good desire of their hearts, in their personal lives, family lives, professional lives, bless them in Jesus' name. Answer their prayers. Do more than they're expecting. We pray that tonight you bless all our workers everywhere connected together with us in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, that your truth, your power, the anointing that breaks every yoke will break every yoke in every life in Jesus' name. Lead us into the truth. Help us abide in the truth. Defend the truth. Stand for the truth. Honestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Be with your people tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Can see that we're coming to Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. Second Chronicles, chapter twenty. I'm reading from verse fourteen. Then upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mahaniah, a Levite, of the sons of Isaac came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation and said hacking ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem thou king Jehoshaphat thus says the Lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. That battle is no more yours. Amen. Verse 16, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the edge of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with the, his face to the ground and all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord worshipping the Lord and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of Kohites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high and he rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets so shall ye prosper Amen. and when he had consulted with the people he appointed singers unto the lord that should 
praised the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army to say and to say praise the lord for his mercy endureth forever and when they began to sing and when they began to sing and when tell me they began to sing and to praise the lord the lord said ambushments against the children of ammon moab and mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten they will still be smitten today yeah. for the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir and utterly to slay and to destroy them and when they had made an edge of the inhabitants of seir everyone tell me helped to destroy another welcome to acts of the apostles chapter 16 reading from verse 23 acts chapter 16 verse 23 and when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and tell me sang praises unto God midnight and the prisoners heard them and suddenly something happened something is going to happen in your life as you praise the Lord something will happen in your family something will happen all those yokes are broken all those problems are resolved that sickness will not remain there the battles are won and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately somebody shout immediately all the doors were opened and every one's bands loosed. Give me a good amen. Tonight we are considering a special subject that probably we have not considered for a long time. And it is about the ministry of praising the Lord, the ministry of singing, the ministry of music, the ministry of raising our voices to the Lord as we come on the battlefield. And then we've done every other thing we knew how to do. And solution had not come. And then we now employ this special ministry of singing and of music. Tonight we're looking at the message the extraordinary ministry of sanctified singers the extraordinary ministry of sanctified singers the congregation of the people of judah had a great problem and they knew not what to do come back to second chronicles chapter 20 and here we're reading from verse 5. Second Chronicles chapter 20, reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court. Underline the word there, congregation. Now verse 12, O our God, wilt thou not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. Very important. The whole nation, the whole tribe, or the king and the people, 
the assembly and the congregation, even with their army, they knew not what to do. Here was a problem. Here was a battle. Here was a foreign army coming together in conspiracy from Moab, from Seir, and from all the other places. And it came against Judah and came against Jerusalem. And it came against Jehoshaphat and the people of God. And Jehoshaphat said, We know not what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. They had prayed, no answer. They had fasted, no solution. They sought the Lord, and yet they were still in their problem and perplexity. They raised up an army, but victory was still to come. Victory eluding them. Now it says, And when they began to sing the praise of the Lord, then began they to conquer. And as we praise the Lord from today, your victory will come. Amen. Your mountains will move. Amen. The battle will be won. Amen. Look at verse 22. Verse 22. And when they began to sing, and to praise the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. That makes us to see the efficacy and the power, the effectiveness of the ministry of singing, the singing ministry of sanctified saints as great unexplored potentials on sanctified singers sing to entertain on sanctified singers sing to exalt themselves on sanctified singers sing to enslave souls attract attention to themselves and enslave the people who are attracted to them. Unsanctified sinners extend sin. While they are singing, they are still perpetrating sin. The sin of pride, the sin of the flesh, the sin of carnal competition. Unsanctified sinners endanger singers, endanger other sinners because those sinners looking at them will say they're as bad as we are although they are standing on stage and they are singing yet they're in danger because the delay the conversion the conviction of those sinners or sanctified sinners entangle others or sanctified sinners enfeeble the church because God is not able to work through those sinful self-centered or sanctified singers so the church is enfeebled by their singing or sanctified singers exhibit self-centeredness turn around and look at the other side of the coin sanctified singers singers who are saved singers who are converted singers who are consecrated unto God singers who are being cleansed from their moral pollution singers who have been purged and purified singers who have visited Calvary two times first time for salvation second time for sanctification these sanctified singers sing to edify they build up the church they challenge the church and they help the church to appreciate god to honor god sanctified singers evangelize in the church on the field while they are singing the singing will be ministering to souls. Some of the people hearing would say, I want to be like them. 
I want to sing like them. I want to join them. Then they realize they cannot be allowed to join them except they are born again. And they say, I will do whatever it will take. I must be part of them. Sanctified singers evangelize the sinners. Sanctified singers emancipate slaves. Those who are slaves to any addiction. Those who are slaves to Satan. Those who are slaves to any habit that binds them. Sanctified sinners emancipate. Singers emancipate like bridge those slaves. Sanctified singers exhort, admonish, counsel the people who are hearing them. Sanctified singers enlighten the people. They enlighten us in worship. They enlighten us in praising the Lord. They enlighten us in exalting the name of the Lord. Sanctified singers establish the church. They establish people in conviction. They establish people in confidence. They establish people in worship. People want to come. I don't want to be late to the service. I don't want to miss the singing of those sanctified singers. Sanctified singers encourage the church for victory. It's like they are victorious and they are confident and they know their God and the way they seek to exalt the name of the Lord they challenge everyone we want to be like that too sanctified singers lead the church to perfection tonight we're looking at this special ministry the extraordinary ministry of sanctified singers three things we're looking at number one divine demonstrations of the almighty through steadfast stewards divine demonstrations of the almighty through steadfast stewards number two divine deliverance for the assembly through sanctified singers divine deliverance for the assembly through sanctified singers number three divine dominion through the anointing of singing saints divine dominion through the anointing of singing saints number one divine demonstrations of the almighty through steadfast she was come back to second chronicles chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 20 second chronicles chapter 20 reading from verse 20 and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. You will prosper. Here we find what we call the 2020 vision. 2020 vision. When you go to an eye clinic and then they do refraction for you, that is, they measure and they see how far you can see, how good you can see. If you can see far very well and see near very well, and every object is clear and sharp and you can read very well and you can identify things very well and they, tell, they test you looking aside you see looking to the other side you see all the range of vision that they test you on everything looks clear good sharp 
They say you have 20 20 vision. And as we look at the Christian life, and as we look at the Christian church, and we come to Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. 20, 20, chapter 20, verse 20. Here is the 2020 vision for somebody who wants to win in every battle. The 2020 vision for somebody who wants to overcome every problem. The 2020 vision for the one that wants to see that he has the victory all the time. And the 2020 vision for somebody who knows that the power of God is there and is to believe in God and then believe his prophet. The 2020 vision. This is that vision that leads to a 2020 victory. 2020 victory there is no retraction there there is no retardation there there's no subtraction there there is nothing that should be done that is not done somebody wants to have total victory triumphant victory permanent victory and complete victory here is the 2020 vision that leads to the 2020 victory here is the 2020 verdict the final scene and the final judgment, the final verdict that says you want to conquer those enemies, you want to do the impossible, you want to climb the unclimbable, you want to achieve the unachievable, here is a verdict, here is the final scene. Even Satan cannot touch this one. Here is the verdict that leads to total victory. You are going to have victory. The virtue, the 2020 virtue that leads to complete and total, irrevocable, irreversible victory in our lives. 2020, here is it that if you want to have this triumphant victory, you turn here victory, you go there victory, you turn here victory, you turn back victory, everywhere you go, you have this triumphant victory. Here is it, the 2020 virtue and the 2020 verdict and the 2020 vision that leads to total victory leads to triumphant victory and leads to the 2020 victory what is it look at it 2020 it says believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper it says believe the word of the lord spoken through his servants the prophets believe the word of the lord revealed through his mouthpiece the prophets believe the word of god interpreted and applied unto you by the messengers of the lord this is the secret of victory of total victory look at it again verse 20 chapter 20 the 2020 vision it says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. and as they went forth Joshua stood and said hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established the work of your hands will be established your projects will be established your family will be established your ministry will be established your evangelism will be established and your leadership in the church will be established believe in the lord your god and it says so shall ye be established believe this prophets and so shall ye prosper it says it's not just one side you know there are people that will say i believe god as for the prophet that one i don't know that one i can you know choose to accept and choose not to accept i can choose to believe i can choose not to believe no that's not the 2020 vision you believe in the lord your god and then you'll be established and you believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper and let me show you that ministry is talking about the ministry of the prophet we're looking at Osea chapter 12 Osea chapter 12 and you understand the reason why you believe in the Lord your God and then you believe his prophets it tells us Osea chapter 12 verse 13 and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt 
and by prophet was he preserved. You see the two sides there. By a prophet, he brought them out. You're, come, you're going to come out of darkness. You're going to come out of difficulty. You're going to come out of danger. You're going to come out of the occultic power that seems to oppress every member of your family. And you want to come out. It says, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out out of Egypt. You're coming out of failure. You're coming out of defeat. You're coming out of all the chains and the shackles of the enemy. It says by prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. You want to come out of disease. You want to come out of sickness. You want to come out of those attacks. You're coming out of those afflictions. By a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. You want to come out of the powers of darkness, the principalities and powers, and the magicians of Egypt. You want to be so totally clean that they cannot touch you, and whatever spell they throw at you will never take effect in your life. It says by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Look at this now. And by a prophet was he preserved. You want to keep your blessing you want to retain your blessing you want to preserve your blessing you want to keep secured everything the lord has done you want to make sure that all those sicknesses that were healed they don't come back again you want to be sure that everything that you are free from you are personal, totally free permanently free it says by a prophet was see preserved and so you can tell what Joshaphat was telling them and he says this is your 2020 vision if you're going to come out you'll come out of everything negative I said you'll come out of everything negative and then you're preserved in the power of the Lord and every promise the Lord has made to you and every pronouncement that God has put upon your head is going to remain permanent it says in the ministry of the prophet these are the steadfast stewards of the Lord now come let's come to New Testament now because we're talking about prophets and there are people that think that prophets you know only are appeared in the old testament we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 3 acts chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 22 in acts chapter 3 verse 22 and most for moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you that's talking about jesus christ it refers to jesus christ there as the prophet the prophet to come look at verse 23 and it shall come to pass that every soul that will not hear that prophet referring to jesus christ is a prince is a prophet is a priest and every soul which shall not which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people hear him listen to him you will be established Amen. chapter 7 of acts acts chapter 7 verse 37 this is that moses which said unto the children of israel a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear him shall ye hear chapter 24 of luke luke chapter 24 reading from verse 17 luke chapter 24 we're reading from verse 17 it says in verse 17 and he said unto them what manner of communications are these that she have one to another as she walk and as sad and one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days and he said unto them what things i want to remind you that this was on the morning of resurrection christ rose from the dead 
And these two people were going on the way. And Jesus joined their company. They were talking about Jesus Christ. And then Jesus said, what kind of communication are you having among you? And you look sad. And they said, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? You don't know what has happened? Then they said, and they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was, tell me, a prophet mighty indeed and, and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had, they had also seen a vision of angels, which said he was alive jesus is alive Amen. i said jesus is alive Amen. but remember it, it was a fact true as the prophet and uh, Jehoshaphat said believe in the lord your god and believe also his prophets now as you come to the new testament you understand it's not only jesus that was a prophet let's come to acts of the apostles now chapter 15. acts chapter 15 the ministers of God are referred to as prophets, New Testament. And the word of God is seen, the one that takes the Bible and looks at the revelation and reads the revelation to you, the mystery of the kingdom, and interprets that to you. He brings the bread of life, he brings the word of life, and he brings that into your life. And faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That one that reads that word, interprets that word, applies that word, and becomes a revelation in your heart. That's the prophet in the New Testament. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 27. Acts chapter 15, verse 27. We have sent, therefore, Judas, not, not Iscariot, Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. That is, we are sent these people and we are sending them with writing. We are sending them with the conclusion of the apostles in Jerusalem and they will speak to you by word of mouth for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us apostles to lay upon you no greater body than these necessary things that she abstain from meats offered unto idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if ye keep yourselves ye you shall do well you will do well Amen. fear ye well so when they were dismissed they came to Antioch and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. You see that? The epistle that had been written, the letter that had been written, the conclusion that had been taken you know, at the headquarters in Jerusalem. Judas and Silas delivered it to the church. Look at this. Which, when they had read, they rejoiced for consolation. Now, let's see what... The Bible is saying about this Judas that took the word of God there. This Silas that took the word of God there. Verse 32. And Judas and Silas, tell me. Tell me out aloud. Say it as if you are now discovering something new. Being prophets also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them prophets the people who come who take the word of god to the congregation 
and they read the word of God to the congregation and they interpret the word of God to the congregation. The 2020 vision that leads us to victory. The 2020 virtue that leads us to victory. The 2020 verdict that leads us to victory. The 2020 vow that leads us to victory is believe in the Lord your God and believe his prophets, those who bring the word of God unto us. First Corinthians chapter 12. In First Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 18. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. But now, as God said, members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him verse 28 in verse 28 and god has said some where i said where open your bible first corinthians chapter 12 verse what's the verse we're looking at 28 and god has said some tell me in the church first apostles secondly prophets thirdly teachers after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. You see that in the New Testament, there's the ministry of the apostle. And then there's the ministry of the prophet. And remember the 2020 vision, believe in the Lord your God and believe also in his prophets. That he is the people that bring the word of God to us. They bring the mystery of the kingdom. The revelation of the word of God. And they're not giving their opinion. They're bringing the message from God. The revelation from God. And they declare it unto us. It says, if you're going to have total victory. If you're going to have 2020 victory. If you're going to have triumphant victory. If you're going to have complete victory. Believe the Lord your God. And believe is prophets we come to chapter 14 of first corinthians first corinthians chapter 14 i'm reading here from verse uh, from verse 37 first corinthians chapter 14 verse 37 if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge the things that i write unto you that they are the commandments of the lord you understand that verse prophet or spiritual is using those two words interchangeably is spiritual that's a prophet is a prophet that's spiritual and then he tells us about him let him acknowledge the things that i write unto you let him hear the words that was speaking if he is a prophet he will know that this is sound doctrine if he is a prophet if he is spiritual he will know that this is the word of the lord he will know that this is the truth the infallible truth the unchanging truth of the word of god look at that again if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that i write unto you in all these epistles that the commandments of the lord in uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 18. It says, For through him, the through Christ, we have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers or for and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god look at this and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets you're built on the foundation that means as the apostle is sowing into your life is injecting the word into your heart as the apostles as they're bringing the word 
the foundational truth of repentance, the foundational truth of water baptism, the foundational truth of righteousness, the foundational truth of baptisms in the plural, the foundational truth of the future of the rapture, the foundational truth of the basic teachings of the word of God. As the apostles are doing that, the, the prophets are also following after. They are affirming they are confirming what the apostles have taught and it says these members of the church fellow citizens with the says they are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets jesus christ himself being the chief cornerstone chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 4 ephesians chapter 3 verse 4 whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy prophet holy apostles and who prophets by the spirit it says all that we're hearing now the word of god the word of salvation the word of his grace we're hearing from the holy apostles and the prophets who are the preachers of the gospel and the people that come and they tell us the gospel they tell us about christ about salvation about sanctification about holy ghost baptism about how to prepare for the rapture about how to spend eternity with god in heaven it says they are apostles and prophets remember the 2020 vision believe in the lord your god and believe is prophets and so you'll be established and you will prosper Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets. You see that? Uh, the, the prophetic ministry, uh, some people think that, you know, when you say prophet, it's like it's going to rain tomorrow. That's a prophet. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about those who proclaim the word those who declare the word those who make the revelation of the gospel very clear to the minds of the people and they say i had that from the apostle i had that from the prophets and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers why for the perfecting of the saints the lord will perfect you for the work of the ministry you will progress in this work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in which to deceive now we understand the 2020 vision and we understand the prophets and we understand what our responsibility is what our virtue is what the verdict is what the vision is believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established and believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper somebody there is going to prosper yeah. i said you are going to prosper yeah. and everything you touch will be blessed of the lord in jesus name we're coming back to second chronicles chapter 20 point number two now divine deliverance for the assembly through sanctified singers divine deliverance for the assembly through sanctified singers we're told in uh, we read in the uh, second uh, chronicles chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 reading from verse 21 and when he had consulted with the people he appointed the singers unto the lord he appointed the singers unto who he appointed the singers tell me out aloud unto the lord that he should 
praise the beauty of holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endure it forever and when they began to sing and to praise the lord said ambushments against the children of ammon moab and mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten all those spirits powers conspiring against your progress they're smitten already yeah. verse 23 and the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir utterly to slay and to destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of seir tell me they will not destroy you they will destroy themselves your life is preserved and your ministry is preserved and your calling is preserved and everything the lord has purposed in your life is preserved in jesus name then in verse 24 and when judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness they looked upon the multitude and behold there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped i thought you'll say amen. amen verse 29 look at verse 29 and the fear of god was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the lord fought against the enemies of israel so the realm of jehoshaphat was quiet your environment will be quiet your family will be peaceful for his god gave him rest round about now we have heard look at that verse uh, verse uh, 21 again uh, that he appointed singers unto the lord how did he do that appointed singers unto the lord you see that she just came and then he looked at the congregation and said you like to sing how many of you would like to sing and you know we are going to the battle and some are going to be singers and some are going to carry the spear and they're going to do the fighting which one do you choose raise up your hand no 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 how were they chosen we're looking at first chronicles chapter 25 first chronicles chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 7 first chronicles chapter 25 and we're reading from verse tell me verse 7 look at this so the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the lord these were not just you know refrains and the people that do not know any rudiment of music and they have not been taught and they have not been trained no that's not how they were chosen it says so the number of them which were with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the lord even all that were calling that means experts trained examined and then they saw that they really could play and they could sing or train voices and instruments was 200 first call and h then it goes on to say in verse 8 and it cast lots watch against watch as well the small as the great the teacher and the scholar as the scholar there were those instructing them there were those teaching them and there were those who were studying the scholars and when these people were experts then they were chosen to sing and then they sang with such dexterity and such perfection and the melody came out together with their sanctified experience and they had the victory
tree and if you are a singer there make sure you are well trained and make sure you don't leave any stone unturned so that you can be your very best for the kingdom of God and there will be victory through your sanctified singing in Jesus name second chronicles chapter 23 Second Chronicles chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 23, we're looking at verse, um, verse 13. And she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar, at the entering in, and the princes, look at this, and the prophet and the trumpets by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets. Also, the singers with instruments of music. Did you hear that? The singers with instruments of music. Look up here. It's not like, you know, I have a choice. I don't know how to play any musical instrument. And I'm not going to try. And I'm not going to learn. All I can do is sing. I don't even know the notes. And I cannot read the music. All I can do, I know I have a good voice. And, you know, I come out. No. We must be trained. And it is that training that makes us to offer the very best unto the Lord. Look at that part again. It says, and uh, all the people of the land rejoice and sounded with trumpets. Also the singers with the instruments of music. Look at this. And such as. And such as taught to sing praise. I'm always missing singing practice. And when I come to the tail end of the practice, I want the choir master to choose me. Because after all, I belong in the choir. They were taught, taught to sing. And it is that teaching, that instruction, both in the instrumentals and both with the voice that make us to come out and we come out to sing to the glory of the Lord. And uh, when you are trained like that, then the ministry of sinking has effect. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm reading here from verse 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is cunning, who is an expert player on an harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, Saul, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. On the land of what they are cunning. Cunning there means clever instructed well taught it's not just that he's just pulling the cords and discordant sounds are coming out sounds that will soothe sounds that will refresh sounds that will harmonize and sounds that will come and when that person that was having the torment the trauma the stress, the distress, the oppression of the evil spirit. When the sound comes and enters in, there's a refreshing. And there is a renewal. And there is healing. And then it says, when the evil spirit from the Lord is upon thee, then that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And so said unto his servants, provide me now a man that can play somehow that can play somebody who just started somebody just learning somebody will not even pass the grade one the level one no it says that can play well and bring him to me then 
answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, sharp, well taught, well instructed, expert, good in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person. That's the appearance. You know, the appearance of the singer is also important. It's not just the voice coming out, the facial expression when you're singing, and your standing when you're singing, and your breathing when you're, st when you're standing, and when you're singing, and the way the voice comes out, not a pitch, an octave above the normal, and not something that is an octave lower, and not something that is not a kind of harmonizing with the instrumentalists that are singing. Not that you are singing in a different tone, another key. It says concerning this individual that is prudent in matters, is comely in person, and the Lord is with him, not a backslider. This is a person that as for music, good. As for the singing, good. As for the harmony of all the parts, good. As for your singing and you have an ear to what is being played and it harmonizes with your voice. Not that you just allow the player to be playing and then you go off key and nobody checks up anything. He says, and the Lord is with him. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp. And it's a way to carry that harp. You see, as you handle musical instrument, it's not just that you know you are whatever, drawing whatever. There's a way to carry. And it's a way to posture yourself. If you stand in, there's a way to stand with that instrument. If you're sitting, there's a way to stand. And the person you're ministering to, when he sees everything, that everything is according to the way it ought to be, it's not only that it challenges him, it refreshes him. And look at this, it says, and David took an app and played with his hand. So Saul was tell me. You see, this was a king. He had all the possibilities of medical treatment in that place. But all those medical things did not help. And even all his servants around him, all those servants around him, they couldn't help. And that's why they said, let's go and look for somebody. Because medicine has failed, psychology has failed, counseling has, has failed, sleeping and resting has failed, diet has failed, every other thing has failed. And now they said, the last thing we can talk about is music and the singing and then it says he was a fresh and he was well and the evil spirit departed from him give me a good amen, amen. you see that's what we're looking for when uh, we have real music and the music by sanctified singers ministers to the people exceptional deliverances and extra ordinary exploits attended the singing of these sanctified singers god looks at the heart while hearing the voice of the singers is looking at the heart and when melodious singing proceed out of a mixed spirit cleansed hearts the lord responds with desired miracles what happens when you hear such miracles it's look at this number one hearts are melted hearts are melted you're listening it arrests your attention you cannot look here or look there that music arrests your attention number one hearts are melted number two souls are convicted souls are convicted because the spirit of god comes to walk with that music and then 
there is conviction conviction souls are convicted number three decisions are inspired while they are there and they're hearing that music they're taking decisions i will serve the lord i will serve the lord if this is what it means to sing on earth i want to join the alleluia chorus in heaven i want to sing in heaven decisions are inspired number four lives are transformed when there is music that is orchestrated by the spirit of god backed up by the spirit of god backed up by the power of god lives are transformed number five sicknesses are healed you can see the case of Saul, the king sicknesses are healed and then number six captives are delivered the music by itself the singing by itself and it is backed up by the spirit of god and the power the anointing that comes with it captives are delivered enemies are conquered we have seen that in uh, second chronicles chapter 20 from verse 21 all through to verse 24 enemies are conquered number eight battles are won and battles in our church will be won in every local church will be won in jesus name number nine sinners are converted they're hearing the words of the song and it's ministering to them it's bringing up faith in them it leads them to decision it leads them to conviction it leads them to confession it leads them to giving their lives to the lord number 10 converts are established those who have just come to know the lord and they hear such inspiring music and they hear such inspiring orchestration those converts are established number 11 saints are edified saints are edified you feel you are in real worship you feel you've been to church you feel you've listened to something that has lifted you up and even after you have finished the service and you're going back home it is still coming back fresh in your mind and number 12 worshipers are turned heavenward worshipers are turned heavenward god cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelieving singers he cannot walk with unbelieving singers but those who are saved and those who are channels of his mercy channels of his grace channels of his power he will walk with you in jesus name i said he will walk with you in jesus name and that means then we need to understand that music in the church or music on the evangelistic field will do something wonderful to get to the hearts of the people and to lead the people to fall on their faces and to say that god is in this place and i knew it not we're looking at psalm 74 psalm 74 i'm reading from verse 9 psalm 74 we're reading from verse 9 we see not our signs there is no more any prophet neither is there among us any that knoweth how long what he's saying is that as we look at the time of uh, Jehoshaphat and he said hear me all of you in Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God and so will you be established and believe his prophets and so will you prosper and the 2020 vision carried them onto victory total victory triumphant victory 2020 victory and now the psalmist is saying we're looking for those days of old where we had the 2020 verdict the 2020 vow and in 2020 um your dedication to the lord and we see the result we saw the results at that time it says as that now we see not our signs it says that as now there is no more any prophet to even believe it says that as now and neither is there any among all that knoweth how long oh god how long shall the adversary reproach bring us to those days again when the people at the 2020 vision and then power there will be power manifestation shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever why why we 
drawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand, pluck it out of thy bosom. For God is my king of old, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. He will do it again. I said he will do it again. In every local church, it will happen. Every district church, it will happen. Every group church, it will happen. At the central church, it will happen. On the crusade field, it will happen. Power manifestation everywhere in Jesus' name. Point number three now. Divine dominion through the anointing of sinking saints. Divine dominion through the anointing of sinking saints. Uh, let's let's to start with. Let's understand. Believers, children of God, are called saints. Saints, saints in the pew, saints on the pulpit, saints in the choir, saints in the orchestra, saints as ministers, saints everywhere. Look at Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three. Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three. I'm reading from verse three. It says, Ye, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. You see that? He's calling those who believe in the Lord's saints. And he says, They sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy word. The whole congregation, a congregation of saints. We're looking at some 50 saints. Some 50. I'm reading here from verse 5. In Psalm 50, verse 5, see what he calls the worshippers. It says in Psalm 50, verse 5, Gather my saints together unto me, Old Testament. It says the people that appear before me, either as members of congregation or as ministers of the congregation, and they gather together. It may be on Sunday, it may be on Monday, it may be on Tuesday, it may be on Thursday, it may be on Saturday like today. Anytime, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And let's look at Psalm 89. We're saints. Psalm 89. I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 89, verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of, tell me, of the saints, and it is those saints that God says in verse 34, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. It says I'm talking to the saints. It says I'm gathering the saints together. It says I am having all these saints, and they gather together. They are converted. They are consecrated. They are committed unto the Lord. And it says, gather them together, and I give them my word, and I'm going to be faithful unto them. And then it says, my covenant with them will I not break. Psalm 97, verse 10. Psalm 97, we're looking at verse 10. In Psalm 97, verse Verse 10, here it tells us, Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. You see that all over, wherever you go, Old Testament, and then he says he delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. He has delivered you already. We're looking at Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 18. Daniel chapter 7. Reading from verse 18. But the saints of the Most High. You see that? Old Testament. Anywhere you go, you go to other books, you go to the Psalms, you come to the prophets. It says, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. We will take the kingdom. And possess the kingdom for how long? Forever. Even forever and Ever. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. The saints of the Most High. Come to the New Testament now because we're called saints. We're called saints. Our sins have been forgiven. 
our hearts are be cleansed and our souls are be washed we'll be justified and our lives are totally turned around we're called saints romans chapter eight and i'm reading from verse 27 romans chapter eight reading from verse 27 it says in verse 27 he and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god he maketh intercession for the saints according to the uh, will of god first corinthians chapter 14 in first corinthians chapter 14 reading from verse 33 first corinthians chapter 14 verse 33 it says but for god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of tell me of the saints the church is made up of members members who are saints those who are saintly they have been washed they have been cleansed they have been put they have been purified and they have been sanctified it tells us in ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god all those who are members of the family of god we are saints colossians chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 12. colossians chapter 1 reading from verse 12. here it says giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light you cannot miss it it's all over there in the old testament all over here in the new testament that we are called to the saints who has delivered us i am delivered who has delivered i am delivered praise the lord i said i'm delivered praise the lord who has delivered us from the power of darkness they will not have authority over you anymore and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son we're looking at hebrews hebrews i'm reading from chapter 6 hebrews chapter 6 and i'm reading here from verse 10 hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 it says for god is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name look at this in that ye have ministered to who to the saints and to minister anywhere you go in the new testament it says if we're believers if we're children of god we are saints and so those who are going to sing and they're part of the church and they have been cleansed and have been converted and they're consecrated to the lord they must be saints singing saints those are the, that's the kind of song that the Lord will honor. The one that is still going to the prayer warriors, say, you know, something pressing me down in the night. Uh, you know, I find myself in the midst of uh, some people and we're eating this in the night. I find myself, I don't understand, um, you know, that kind of company. And they say that they are to drink this and drink that. I want you to pray for me. That should not be the choir. And that should not be among the people who are saved. The people who are delivered, the people who are set free, and he has taken us away from the kingdom of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. And then when you, when you stand like that and you are singing, inside you are pure, outside you are holy, there is no condemnation, there is no evil, uh, there is uh, no flying in the night, there is nothing. When you sing, power will come down. And when you play the instrument, even before you start sinking, you know, the anointing that breaks the yoke will flow through you in Jesus' name. And we're looking at we're looking at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter five, and I'm reading from verse one. Ephesians chapter five, verse one. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children and walk in love 
not in hatred and walk in love and not in envy and walk in love and not in malice and walk in love and not in strife and uh, murmuring and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God and to for a sweet smelly savor. Look at this, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as it becometh as it becometh saints. It's not somebody that is, you know, before we go for the, uh, you know, choir singing, uh, kneeling down in a corner somewhere, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Um, you know, I'm going to sing a solo today. I'm going to sing this one today, but Lord, uh, if you forgive me this one, I'll never do that again. Why are you singing? Why are you singing? It says, it should not be once named among you. The people who are sanctified and the people who are purified and the people that the blood of Jesus has washed you whiter than snow and it says we are saints when saints sing miracles happen I said when saints sing miracles happen we're coming to Acts of the Apostles Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 25 Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God you will sing praises unto God I said you will sing praises unto God ministers will sing we can sing Pastors can sing, we can sing. Members can sing, we will sing. Our choirs will sing, we will sing. We will become a singing church in Jesus' name. At midnight, in the house fellowship, you will sing. In the local church, you will sing. And when you are singing congregational songs, it's not like you are singing and you are almost going to fall down because you are almost sleeping and you are dozing, but you are awake and your heart is sending that melodious congregational song unto the Lord. While the congregation is singing and the orchestra is playing and we join the, the instruments together with the voice of the congregation, miracles will begin to happen. And at midnight, Paul and Silas play, prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them and suddenly, somebody help me shout suddenly, Fire. shout it aloud, Fire. a miracle coming upon your life, shout it Fire. And suddenly, 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 there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. The foundation of every prison was shake. And the foundation of every place of captivity in your life was shake, even tonight in Jesus' name. It says, and then, and immediately, all the doors were opened. Doors are opened before you. And everyone's bands loosed. Everyone's bands loosed. Everyone's bands loosed. When saints pray, when saints praise, when saints sing, mountains move. Your mountain will move tonight. Prison doors open. Your prison doors are open in Jesus' name. Evil spirits flee. They will not come near you again. Jericho walls fall. Jericho walls in your life will fall in Jesus' name. When saints sing, principalities and powers bow. They will bow. In your life, they will bow. In your family, they will bow. Somebody shout, bow. Say that again. They will be crushed in your life in Jesus' name. When saints sing and when saints praise the Lord, troubles and trials cease. Serpents and scorpions die. Serpents will die under your feet. You will march on them. Horses and chariots perish. When saints sing, sinners surrender. When saints sing, enemies submit. Heaven descends. Blessings flow. Miracles multiply. Believers overcome. Saints reign in life. You will reign. I said you will reign. Where are you? You will reign in Jesus' name. 
stand up and praise the Lord. Stand up and praise the Lord. Stand up and praise the Lord. And sing to the Lord from sanctified hearts. And say, Lord, here are we today. Here are we today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His mercy endure it forever. Praise the Lord. In your heart, praise the Lord. With your voice, praise the Lord. In your family, praise the Lord. On the road, praise the Lord. Anywhere you find yourself, praise the Lord. Let the praises go up. Let the shouts go up. Let the singing go up. And let the glory of the Lord fill the house of the Lord. Your mountain will move your problems will be solved and all those things all the shades and all the shackles everything will vanish away raise your voice and praise the lord it's your miracle time